business intelligence or business analytics okay because based on this information the ceo may take some steps right the steps may be in terms of cost cutting right the test the steps may be in terms of enabling more suppliers it may be anything but this one report may be a decision enabler but to get this one report you may have to talk to tons and tons of databases now going back to the next slide another major issue if you look at today's world there is something called the data growth every year data grows if you take american express or uh, uh, mastercard or visa card see how many data is being processed even if you take uh, indian railways or credit card or take mobile billing if you take airtel or at&t every call every sms is being tracked there is a record getting into the database and imagine if you have 100 million subscribers right 100 million subscribers 100 calls per each you are talking about 10000 million records getting into that the data grows and you don't have to tell about the data facebook or twitter is generating over a period of year right that's a problem right when the data grows what happens this is this is the result of that system slows down why every time you go to do a search the search you are giving some keyword or a reservation number it goes to the entire database and then tries to pull the data the more the data the slower the response reason finding one guy out of one guy is very easy finding one guy out of 100 is slightly difficult finding one person out of 1000 people is still difficult because you have to do recognition of that particular guy so more data causes slowdown in the system so what happens they try to do something called archiving this is another area that people need to understand the data warehousing is archiving meaning okay the journey has been finished day before yesterday but there was a record in the railways reservation system about that particular reservation do I need that record in the database now Jenny is finished that record is of no use to me should I keep it in the database or not right uh, I don't need that in the main database I need that for history why do I need that for history purpose because there may be tomorrow some inquiry coming in or audit coming up okay did this person travel on that day do you have a proof in the airlines so they may have to keep those records but the record need not be in the main database main database needs to be always current so what we do is move the past data by the process called archiving or archival to another database from that past database pull the reports so you cannot delete the data so the fundamental bottom line is you cannot erase data if at all you can do something you can move it from one database to another but it has to be somewhere kept for audit purpose for inquiry purpose for history purpose for reporting purpose because uh, there is already a question someone has asked should bank also do this archival yes uh, if you if you take the US uh, credit rating side for the last 10 years is this guy having any bankruptcy or not the data is there so they will go through the entire history of that person based on the social security number see whether that person has done any bankruptcy or that person has done any defaulting or by not paying their credit card bill it is there same way take a medical system patient A goes to a particular hospital 
and for the 10 years he is maintaining that hospital as the favorite one complete patient history is maintained for the 10 years in the hospital's database so you cannot erase the data now imagine how much of data will be there over a period of time now, now we are moving from giga data to terabytes right that is why we are now talking about something called right have you heard of this thing called the big data or Hadoop new databases are coming reason is right the reason why do you need this new databases like Hadoop or big data right data is growing and growing and growing over a period of time normal databases cannot handle it that is why you need to have archival process that means you are just segregating the data from current and past that's all now this is all fine there is one question does archiving slow down the system archiving per se does not slow down the system to a large extent it's almost like uh, cutting the nail right the nail grows you want to keep a check on it you cut it but when the archiving actually happens you are reducing the size of the primary database but during that time you are moving the data from primary to the history database maybe for 15 minutes or 20 minutes every day during that time the database may be slow but apart from that post archival right post archival your primary system should be faster it will be faster now that's fine we talked about data retention data growth companies acquiring each other but where exactly ETL fits in before you go to ETL you if you read this very carefully extract transform and load when I say extract there is something from somewhere I need to extract right what is that that is called a source database from where I extract the data this is called the source databases let us take an example right uh, you have done Amazon right Amazon uh, e-com site in Amazon e-com site many vendors post their products and price every day the products and price will be changing so every day vendors from so many companies their stores send product price and available quantity information to them right take eBay every day new bids are done in those cases eBay provides a specific UI only through that you can do whereas Amazon kind of a sites they provide something called upload data right through files so each one can send that information through CSV files or D tab separated files or XML files so the source is the vendors the sellers file system or sellers database system right now in that case look at the vendors number of vendors for amazon.com uh, there is a question uh, one person has asked can you show me amazon.com as an example okay I'm just pulling out Amazon's website now just see you over here you are talking about Amazon Kindles it is their own product that's fine but if you go down in this one look at this there's an India today happening over right and uh, you see baggages then laptops watches you are talking about uh, when you this is coming from Maxter this is coming from Zinio right this is from coming from magazine cloner dot com this is not a product of Amazon this is what I'm talking about the data comes from this vendor to Amazon so the source of the data is from this vendor if you go to this one the source of this particular laptops information is from Acer the information from here is Dell this is from Toshiba right same way for watch 
everywhere you go the data comes from multiple places that is called source database again the source database need not be just a relational database system it can be anything from there we need to take it to the target database for business intelligence purpose so from the source the formats do change the way Dell sends the data to Amazon may be different from the way Acer sends the data to Amazon it need not be always exactly the same e-commerce sites provide right uh, a facility here Amazon is just a place it's it's a platform the vendor is actually Dell right so there's a there's a distinct uh, there's a subtle difference between the actual vendor and the platform Amazon provides a platform for the vendors so what has to happen is Amazon provides the target database source comes from so many vendors but the formats are different and the format has to be converted to the way Amazon expects that is what is called transform now if I come back the source need not always be a database source can be CSV file or XML file or any file or even Excel file e-commerce the reason why I took e-commerce because e-commerce today what is the real internet happens every data coming to the e-commerce site take indiamart.com or uh, amazon.com or eBay or Google shopping right everywhere you have got multiple vendors the data source comes from so many vendors if you take in a single enterprise for example uh, uh, a Cisco kind of a company a public company right or Procter and Gamble or Johnson and Johnson right let us take a simple example Cisco or Johnson and Johnson or Procter and Gamble right so many suppliers so many products right so many retail stores right Cisco may send a router it may be sold in the Best Buy store in a mall Johnson and Johnson's soaps and powders are sent from their factory to so many retail stores same way for Procter and Gamble but ultimately when you have a complaint on the product you report only to Cisco right how do they know that this is their product number because they maintain the entire supply chain of data imagine the amount of data but the problem is this is the catch so many suppliers so many retail stores everybody will be sending in their own format of data but ultimately they will all coming back to PNG or Johnson Johnson's or Cisco so each one will have their own format but today's context now XML is almost a standard again I will not say 100% of all data coming from XML but most people do by XML but many people still have CSV comma separated values or PSV now if the same target needs data from different vendors you need extraction process so something has to take the data it's almost like FTP right you need to have an FTP coming to that site from there you need to put the data into the target database yes there is uh, one other person saying that JSON is also a format yes absolutely today every every new format is also coming so in those cases we need to definitely take care of extraction process and transformation process now take this simple example you take your mobile phone or if you have any computer system or a phone in front of you or a headset just take it and then see that or turn the monitor and then see it you will see a part number PN and serial number SN part number and serial number in manufacturing every item will be barcoded there will be some number in it the thing is what you may get as a Parker pen or if you take a Maruti car or if you take a BMW car not all parts are manufactured by the same guy supplier part number will be different customer part number will be different 
the value will be different format will be different value will also be different so the issue is when the value and the formats are different this is the clear case of transformation but ultimately if 100 different vendors are sending the data to the car manufacturer or the computer manufacturer in that case someone has to extract someone has to transform the transformation is nothing but reformatting very simple vendor A uses 6 digit part number vendor B uses 10 digit part number either you may have to pad it with zeros or spaces or convert in some way right otherwise there will be a problem 